In today's video, I'm going to share with you the pros and the cons of living in Gallatin, Tennessee. And we relocated to the Nashville area in 2013, so we knew nothing about the areas. We didn't even know about Gallatin then. I found it when I had to help a client move there. But I'm going to give you the pros and the cons. And then at the end of this video, if you stayed around that long, I'll actually give you my take on if I would live in Gallatin. And let's get after it. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Greg Speckman. I'm with the Living in Nashville, Tennessee channel. So if you want to learn everything about what it's like to live here, eat here, sleep here, play here, and from someone who's actually not from Nashville, then click the subscribe button and the bell to be notified every time I do new videos. I've been getting a ton of people that are just like you that are reaching out to me about making that move to the Nashville area, and I absolutely love it. So if that's you, give me a call. Shoot me a text, send me an email. Let's get talking about moving you to the Nashville Gallatin area. First thing I need to do is show you where Gallatin is at on the map. All right, so I pulled open the map. You can see Gallatin is highlighted up here in the northeast corner or top right of the map, kind of in red. West and south is Nashville or left and down. And then you can kind of see that Murfreesboro is just directly down from Gallatin. And then you got Franklin that's down past Nashville, down I-65. And so where Gallatin is located, it's in a unique little area outside of Nashville. It takes you 30, 45 minutes-ish to get to Gallatin. And so let's go into the pros and the cons of living in Gallatin. Let's jump right into the cons. So con number one would be the weather. And the weather in Tennessee, Nashville, it is hot and humid during the summertime. So that's one of my least favorite things about living in Nashville was the weather. It is awful during the summertime. So July, August, and then the first part of September is not my favorite time of the year. However, I have clients that absolutely love it. So they must love humidity and bugs and that sort of thing because it's not the greatest thing but we have severe thunderstorms that come in. So I had a client that relocated and that was one of his big things is he wanted to see the thunderstorms. He wanted to be able to video them and photo them. And so we have some amazing thunderstorms with lightning that lights up the whole sky and some really cool thunder. So that's super cool. Typically the thunderstorms are not really that scary except for some dogs that uh, don't seem to like it. Like uh, our dog Archie doesn't really like the thunder but he's okay with the lightning for whatever reason. And then fireworks like cause a little bit of an issue for him, but not a big ordeal. Winter time, it rarely snows. When it snows, you get somewhere around a quarter inch of snow maybe. Some years it's been a little bit more where you've gotten a few inches of snow. And I think we had one year where it had six to 12 inches of snow, but on average, it doesn't snow very much. So that is a big draw for a lot of people that relocate from Michigan and uh, other parts of the country where they get a lot of snow, they didn't want to deal with much snow. So when the snow that we have that shuts everything down where you can't go anywhere, they close schools, they run out of milk and bread at the grocery store. I still haven't figured out why we run out of milk and bread. If you know, comment below. But uh, it doesn't get very, very cold in the winter time. I typically can wear shorts and flip flops most of the year. There have been a few days where it's a little bit too chilly, but for the most part, I can get away with a sweatshirt, and this drives my wife nuts because she wants me to wear pants when it's cold, but I love to wear shorts, so that's my thing. And then um, pro about the wintertime for me is that there's no bugs, so all the bugs are dead in the wintertime. The snakes are all in hiding, so you don't have to deal with that, although we never really dealt with snakes much. But I've had clients that have had people come out and remove snakes from their property, so it just depends what kind of property when you have some acreage you're going to get more things than other people were going to, are going to get one thing to make note is that it does rain a ton it rains a lot so things are very very green which is amazing but it seems like there's weeks where it rains every single day it doesn't seem to usually rain all day long however there are days when it does usually it's for five or ten minutes in the afternoon it'll rain and that helps cool off the temperatures which is a plus for that one other thing about the rain that you should note is we never watered our lawn we didn't have sprinklers there are a few times in the summer when it wouldn't rain all week and so we'd have to run the hose with a sprinkler thing attachment to it to keep the lawn from dying but 
for the most part, you can get away with um, not having sprinklers. However, you're going to see people in different neighborhoods that have really lush lawns and flowers and plants, and then you're going to need sprinklers to keep that uh, level up. Fall, you're going to absolutely love the weather. It's cooler. It's nice. It is super, super great to be outside in the fall. The leaves change and we have really nice leaf color changes that happen typically. Get like a two week, three week window usually where you can see the leaves before they all fall off. I remember one year where we were waiting, waiting, waiting for the leaves and they kind of never changed. And then we had this big wind storm that came through and pretty much that took the leaves off the trees. So we never had any sort of cool leaf colors to look at, but usually we get that. Pro number one on the list of living in Gallatin is going to be the rankings. So this is going to be according to niche.com since I can't speak to some of these rankings that of course they can. So let's show you what those rankings are. All right, here we are. Number two best place to live in Sumner County is Gallatin. It's got a B plus overall rating, A minus public schools, B minus for housing, B good for families, A minus for jobs, B for cost of living, B minus for outdoor activities, C plus crime and safety, B minus nightlife, A for diversity, B minus for weather, B minus for health and fitness, and B minus for commute. So the commute's not bad at all, so just know that. Other rankings, most diverse suburb in Tennessee, number eight out of 103. Suburb with the best public schools in Tennessee, number 14 of 103. Places with the best public schools in Tennessee, ranked 21 out of 205. So you're gonna find good schools, according to niche.com and great schools uh, in Gallatin. So if that's a thing for you, then we can definitely chat about that a little bit more. I can give you some other websites you can look up that as well. Over here, then I load up great schools so you can get a good idea of the public schools. And here's the elementary schools. You can see their rankings, eight out of 10, seven, six, five, five. The reason for those, some of the lower ratings than nines or tens out of tens is the equity percentage. So what does equity even mean? Middle schools, you can see here, middle schools, nine out of 10, five, five, five. So they're pretty average for middle schools. High school, 10 out of 10, eight out of 10, five, five, five. So schooling wise, every client that I've had that has moved to Gallatin has said the schools are really, really good. And according to their rankings, they're pretty good schools as well. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of the rankings. Gallatin's ranked really, really good as far as a middle Tennessee city for you to pick from. Con number two for living in Gallatin, Tennessee would be the growth. And when I first moved to Nashville in 2013, Gallatin was a small, small town. We helped a client move there pretty quickly and I had never been there and driven, driving through there. I was like, what is this small little podunk town? And it has just grown and grown and grown over the years as more and more people have moved there. They built new subdivisions, luxury subdivisions. It's a great place to call home. And then one other thing that I added to this part of the con would be it doesn't really have good public transportation, if any, just some buses. And it's not good. But Nashville in general is not a public transportation place. You're going to really need a car to get around or a motorcycle that sort of thing to get anywhere. Pro number two is a place called Gallatin Miracle Park, and it has 25 sports fields. I've been there. I've had clients that have had their kids play sports there. It's amazing, and it's something super cool that you should be aware of. If you have kids that are into sports, then that's super awesome that it has that large of a sports area. Con number three is the home prices. Once again, 2013, home prices were super cheap to live in Gallatin. I think we had somebody move there for $250,000 and they got like a new construction home. Super, super nice. And it's just gone up and up and up. So we're going to look here in just a second about some of the prices. So people have asked me, is there a bad area of Gallatin to live? Well, like most cities, there's going to be good parts and bad parts. You just got to figure that out. And since I can't really steer you in that way, my big suggestion would be to look at Google Street View and kind of cruise the street, looking at the homes and that sort of thing. And you'll get a good idea of it. You can also tell typically by the home prices. So here we go. Let's open up the website. Here we are on my website, thespackmangroup.com. Feel free to register, browse all the homes you like. Just shoot me a text or an email saying, hey, Greg, saw you on YouTube and I'm looking on your website. 
so that I know who you are. And, you know, a two bedroom, two bath condo, $299. A three bedroom, one bath home coming soon, $275. Here's a three two for $575, a four four for a million. And then we just kind of go down the list. You're going to see anywhere from the 300000 mark up to over a million dollars for a home. Right around here's a three two for four thirty eight. So really, it's just going to depend. So really, it's going to depend on your budget, what size home you want, how much land you want, which part of town do you want to be in, and all of that we talk about when we're on our Zoom strategy call. And that's why you got to reach out to me. So um, the home prices can be higher depending upon where you're coming from, but you get a lot of bang for your buck living in Gallatin. Pro number three would be that you're right next door to Hendersonville. So Hendersonville has a ton more restaurants and shopping. You are 30 minutes to a place called the Providence Marketplace, and that's in Mount Juliet, which that place is super cool. It has tons of shopping and places to eat as well. When we would go to Pigeon Forge, we would rent a cabin up there, and then we would hang out at the cabin, play games and stuff with the kids and play and watch movies. And then we go into town and do some go-karting and eat at a place called Mellow Mushroom, which is one of our favorite pizza places to eat at. And so that was super cool to go to Pigeon Forge. But when we came back from Pigeon Forge, we'd stop in the Providence Marketplace and eat at the Red Robin. For whatever reason, that seemed to be what the kids wanted after they did the two and a half hour drive back from Pigeon Forge. So that's super close to you to go to as well. And then you can go into Nashville. So con number four would be downtown Nashville, Broadway. All of that is about 45 minutes away. Sometimes you can get there a little faster if you drive really fast than even quicker. But uh, it's also pro number four because of all the things Nashville has. And some of those are you got the NHL Predators. So if you're a hockey fan, then you can go watch the Predators play. If you're a football fan, then you have the Titans who play in downtown. You got baseball, the Nashville Sounds. If you're a soccer fan, then you have the Nashville SC, which is their MLS soccer team that's brand new to Nashville. You got the Nashville Stampede, which is professional bull riding. Had a client that took me to the bull riding thing. I didn't, thought it wouldn't be something for me, but after watching it, it's super fun. And interesting the way that they have it set up where one team goes against the other team and they score points and everything. So that's super cool. Now I'm a bull riding fan. Uh, you got the Gaylord Opry. The same client that took me to the Stampede also took me to the Gaylord Opry. I had never been there. And when I went last year, I got to see Carrie Underwood live, which was awesome. So they have tons of different people that'll play at the Gaylord. So you got that. And then there's just a bunch of other places that you can go to in Nashville, the Ryman, and have fun at. You're just not going to have as many, all of that stuff up in Gallatin, but you can still go to Nashville to do all that stuff that you need to do. Pro number five is the Cumberland River. So the Cumberland River is right there with Gallatin. So you're going to be able to boat and jet ski and play on the water and fish and everything you want to do along the river in Gallatin. So that's Something else that we've had clients that asked about, can I get dock front and all of that? And we can definitely talk about that and help you find the place along the, the river if you want that. But that's pro number five. Con number five, and this is Tennessee in general, and that's that you're landlocked. So you don't really have a beach nearby per se. You're about eight hours down to the Gulf. So you can go to Alabama or Mississippi or Florida, and then you have the Panhandle in Florida. We stayed in Destin, but when fall break, spring break for the kids, all the family seemed to flock down to the Gulf and enjoy all of the water and everything because it's super warm. So it's like swimming in bath water. It's really nice. The water's crystal clear. It is awesome to be able to go down there. So it's definitely something that you should go to. We hadn't gone there for the first five or six years that we lived in Nashville and we made a mistake. Don't make that mistake. If you can afford to go down to Florida or Alabama, go down there and enjoy the Gulf and take all that in. So I told you that I would give you my take. Well, I've spent quite a bit of time up in Gallatin at clients' homes, showing property, helping people buy and sell. And it's changed a ton since I first moved to Nashville. And I think for the better. You're going to have people that live there that say that it's not, but I think it's gotten better. So if you're asking me if I would live in Gallatin, the answer would be yes. However, 
due to me being a real estate agent, helping people like you make that move to Gallatin or anywhere in Middle Tennessee, for, it just doesn't really work for us location-wise. It's too far to get to certain cities um, on a daily basis where uh, something like Franklin is much better. So that's why I have my Keller Williams office currently in Franklin so that it's basically 45 minutes to every city that I help people buy in. So it's not inconvenient to drive anywhere. However, if you ask people that are from uh, Middle Tennessee, 45 minutes is like the longest drive in the world. But when I moved from California, 45 minutes was nothing. That could be just going three or four miles on the freeway would be 45 minutes. Thank you for watching my video. So if you're thinking about making that move to Gallatin or any city in Tennessee, please give me a call shoot me a text, send me an email, and I'd love to talk to you more about it, share my stories, where I've been, all of that. And until next time, I'm out.